IU is one and three in the Big Ten Conference, ten and five overall. Who do we blame for this? You are locked on Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Hoosiers, your one and only daily one-stop shop for everything IU Athletics. I'm your host, as always, Jacob Rude. want to thank you guys for making us your first listen every single day, even on the days where it's really frustrating to be an IU basketball fan. As I said, the Hoosiers are 1-3 and three in the Big Ten. They're 10 and 5 overall. They've lost five of their last eight games. Who do you blame for this? In some ways, it feels like the sky is falling. I don't think we should be at that point yet. But everybody wants to play the blame game right now, which is fair to some degree. So I thought we could look at who the blame or what the blame needs to fall on. I say what the blame because to me, this is not the sexiest answer because everybody wants to point to someone and say, you're the reason for this. The biggest reason IU is one and three and 10 and five right now is injuries. That might be a cop out answer. You can say as much, but at the end of the day, I think that is far and away the number one reason IU is 10 and five this year. The lineup that we expected to play big minutes this season, especially in the competitive games of Trace, Race, uh, Miller Cop. Jalen Hood Shafino and Xavier Johnson just has not been on the floor and specifically for any meaningful games. They've played 125 possessions this season, but almost all of those, the majority of those came against bad teams at the beginning of the year. They played UNC with that lineup, like 10 minutes of the Kansas game. That's basically it. They basically have not, not even basically, they have not had that lineup out there. And we use, I just referenced how many possessions they've played together. I mean, that lineup has been good this season. It is probably middle of the road in terms of overall efficiency this season. And it's come against tough competition, relatively speaking. Um, but they just haven't been out there and when IU needs them out there. We reference that lineup data. What I don't reference often is some of the player ratings over. This is all at Evan Mia. We talk about it many times. It's just kind of an advanced stat site that I uh, use to look up lineup data most often. But they have defensive advanced statistics. And their defensive performance rating, do you know who the top two – players are defensively for Indiana. I'm sure you can guess it based on what we're talking about. It's Xavier Johnson and Race Thompson. IU was already struggling on sun or on Sunday against Iowa on Thursday. All the games without Xavier, they struggle to contain guys on the perimeter. Xavier Johnson is their best guard defender, their best ball handler defender. He could keep guys in front of him. He might have gotten into foul trouble some, but he kept guys in front of him. He made their life difficult, and he stopped guys from just line drives to the rim. IU has struggled. That Jalen Hood Shafino, I think, has the tools to be a good defender. I don't know that we'll ever see him kind of reach that potential at IU. I would think he there's a good chance he's one and done, but. He has some of the tools to do that. He hasn't reached that potential yet this season. He's middle of the road defensively for IU this season. Tamar Bates is the worst defender based on defensive performance rating, which, again, this is one metric. Uh, Trey Galloway is third to last. Miller Cop is last. A lot of these guys that IU's relied upon for big minutes cannot defend, and we see – on Sunday, the end result is a lot of straight line drives to the rim and Trace having to do everything he can to either blo- to try to block the shot, but ultimately that often gives up 
dunks under the basket. Race Thompson, meanwhile, was the guy that IU could put on the best big man for the opposing team and allow Trace to be that guy that floats around and protects the rim. IU doesn't have that. So you saw against Iowa, Trace had to guard Chris Murray some. They were trying a number of different guys. They were switching. That's I, that's why they went to zone a little bit, I think, when race went down because nobody was a good matchup for Chris Murray after race went down. How many times have we seen race be put on the opposing team's best forward? EJ Liddell is the one I always think about. He was playing so well last season coming into Ohio State. We put race on him, and he had one of his worst games up to that point in the season. It might have been one of his worst games of the season. That's the type of defender race is. So you take away IU's best perimeter defender or best defender point of attack is probably the best way to describe it. Their best interior defender, you get 91 points against Iowa and 80 however many points against uh, Northwestern on Sunday. IU cannot do anything defensively. 91 against Iowa, 84 against Northwestern. To some degree, it's a cop-out. I understand that. You might feel that, but it's the truth. And the the result of that is that you're asking a whole lot of other guys to step up into roles they're not ready for, they're not built for. Jordan Geronimo is not ready to be the starting four. For whatever reason this season, he has struggled. Same goes for Malik Renu, who... I is a shell of the player that he was at the beginning of the season. Miller cop is probably the best of those available. And he hasn't been good for the past couple games. He hasn't been, he hasn't been effective on all, the offensive end, which you really need him to be. If you're going to play him at the four. So IU is trying to scramble around and plug these holes left by injury that, it's tough, especially when you lose race on a Thursday and you have to play on a Sunday. Now, there's plenty of other reasons, and we're going to discuss them. The players do have to step up, too, and we're going to talk about Mike Woodson as well. But a lot of this boils down to injuries have really wreaked havoc on IU this season. There hasn't been, even before the Xavier and race stuff, Trace has been in and out of the lineup. Jalen was out of the lineup for a good chunk of games. Geronimo missed a game. There just has not been that level of consistency that you can rely upon. And it's frustrating because there's nothing you can do about it. You in your in in people's minds, they want to blame somebody and say, you're fired or you're waived. You need to transfer. You can't fire injuries. It's it's just kind of the the nature of how things go. It's unfortunate, it's frustrating. But that's that's just kind of, I think, the biggest thing to blame for where Indiana's at at this point in the season. The hope is that Race and Xavier both will be back. It sounds like both should be back. Will the season be long gone at that point? We don't know. That's, that's for the guys that are left. I want to talk about that. The guys that are left and Mike Woodson as well here in our next segment. Before we do that. You guys know we love Built Bar around here. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know a lot of people's goals for the new year are to eat healthier. If that's the case but you don't want to compromise taste, I've got the perfect thing for you. Built Bars where healthy is actually tasty. They're delicious. You hear me talk about them all the time. They taste like candy bars because they're covered in 100% real chocolate. They have so many incredible flavors, churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, cookie dough, cookies and cream. They have limited time flavors all the time, 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 17 grams of protein. The best thing as well, you hear me say you got to order them at Built Bar, you don't even have to do that. They are at Walmart, they are at Sam's Club. I've bought a box of them at Sam's Club multiple times. Next time you're at the store picking up some groceries, running in real quick, Go find you some built bars, buy a case of them, buy a box of them, whatever it is. Let me know what flavor you guys get. My preference is cookies and cream, but they're always releasing 
new limited time flavors as well. So head to your local Walmart, head to your local Sam's Club, try out some built bars today. Thanks again, guys, for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen every single day. Make sure you check out the brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Plus, hear from big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. Be sure you guys are subscribed to us over at YouTube as well. We went live after the games on Sunday, the men's and women's games. I'm going to do that regularly after men's and women's games, or I'm going to go live and record the episodes. Then I want to get your input. So be sure you guys are subscribed to us over there or follow us over on Twitter. Uh, We'll tweet out the link to that as well. Let's talk about some other people that get a piece of the blame pie, the players. And as much as an excuse as I gave a lot of them a second ago, they have to be better. The guys that have been placed into roles to replace X and race have not played well enough. If you look at Tamar Bates, he's had, he's been stop and go. He had the really good game right before the Christmas break against Kennesaw state. And then he has not been good. The last two games, Iowa and Northwestern, he's six of 17 in total three of nine from three, 17 points. You need a lot more offensive production from him. If you're going to have him on the court and like I said, defensively, he isn't up to par. He has the worst defensive rating. IU is 15 points per 100% per per 100 possessions better with him off the court. So, and that's the bit, the only person that, or that is the biggest margin, excuse me. They are significantly better defensively with him off the court. So he has to bring it offensively. And to his credit, IU is the only – CJ Gunn has very limited sample size. So IU is never better offensively than when he's on the court. They're never worse defensively than when he's on the court. It's kind of how things go. There needs to be a middle ground there. It cannot be those two extremes. So he has to be better. But I don't want to single him out. Trey Galloway has to have more of an impact throughout the game. Again, a guy who isn't going to bring you a lot offensively needs to step up on the defensive end. He had some plays at the end of the game on uh, Sunday against Northwestern, some hustle plays. That's what you need more from him. But the biggest issue right now is that floor position. The other forward alongside Trace. It's a black hole right now. There, IU does not have a good four to put next to Trace right now. They tried Jordan Geronimo. He has had back-to-back woeful games, to say the least. And he is not in a good spot. It's wild to think back during the spring and even heading into the season, we made the case. I'm, I'm certainly not singling anyone out. There was potential of him starting as a three. He right now can't even get minutes as a four. Against Iowa, he kind of had to play, played 19 minutes, and was just all over the place, good and bad. And Mike Woodson just didn't play him against Northwestern. He only played 10 minutes. That's not the first time it's happened this season either. He only played nine minutes against Nebraska, only played eight minutes against Arizona. He get he another guy who there's just this huge fluctuation between good and bad. You were hoping there'd be a jump for him this year based on how he finished last year, and it hasn't come. You look at Malik Renu, who we've talked a lot about. Early in the season, through the first maybe half dozen games, there were calls for him to start over a race. I never went that far, but I certainly said he needs to be one of the first guys off the bench. Another guy who right now is struggling mightily. He on Thursday against Iowa, played six minutes and looked just, I don't want to say he looked bad. I'll be blunt about it. I was trying to think of a nice way to say he looked bad. No points, three fouls, two turnovers and a steal. And he missed, or he didn't even attempt a shot. On Sunday, a little bit better, four or five from the field, 
but had four fouls, two turnovers, three rebounds, and eight points. He looks like a freshman that is in his own head right now. I don't know how you get him out of that, but he is doing as much harm as good right now, if not more harm than good. Against Iowa, it was more harm than good. And the fact he only played six minutes on a night when they didn't have Race Thompson is pretty telling. Miller Cop is the best option IU has right now, and he, even he struggled. A, a, I would say part of it is he's playing in a role he may not be familiar with as a stretch four. I think on paper it makes sense to put Trace and him out there together, but in practice it hasn't really amounted to much. He did not attempt, or excuse me, he only attempted two shots on Sunday. He's only attempted three three pointers in the last two games. I've seen it. It's it might be a vocal minority. It's hard to tell sometimes. This notion that you have a three point shooter this good, you need to run plays for him. It's silly. Um, that's not the type of player Miller Cop is. There is a very differing skill set between having a guy come off screens and shoot three pointers versus having a guy being a, a spot up three point shooter. Miller Cop is a good spot up three point shooter, and he has excelled all season at that. You're not running pin down screens for Miller Cop. That's not the type of player he is. There doesn't need to be a play in the playbook to run pin down screens for Miller Cop. At the same time, Teams are zoning up against IU, and you can't run plays against that. That's my other frustrating part, especially after the Iowa game. They, it, it was multiple people on Twitter replying to us saying they needed to run plays for Miller Cop. It's a zone. It's literally designed so you can't run plays against it. There is no play to run there. Part of it's on the players to find him. Part of it's on him to find the open spots on the floor. It's a collective thing right now, and that's what's plaguing the Hoosiers the most is there is not one piece that is failing this team right now. There are a lot of pieces that are not doing enough across the board to help Indiana win the game. And I, I think the most frustrating part about all of this is it feels like the same mistakes are happening over and over again. I pointed this out on Sunday's episode. How many times have you seen an IU player try to make a cross-court cross court pass and it's just a flat line drive that gets picked off by the weak side defender? It happened. I, I always think back to that Kansas game where it felt like it happened a dozen times. It's It happened at least a half dozen times on Sunday, whether it's Trace on one block trying to throw the ball to the other side which in theory is a fine pass. You gotta, you have to see that weak side defender, and teams are starting to put leave a guy over there because they've seen IU make that pass and trace specifically. But there were simple things like standing at the top of the key, trying to pass to a guy in the corner, and you just throw it right to a defender. That's inexcusable. I think the players need to be taking a fair amount of blame for what's going wrong right now. There's a lot of things that you don't have to tell them that they're doing wrong. I know for a fact, and I haven't been in a single meeting, huddle, practice, haven't heard a thing about it. I am. I can tell you for a fact, IU has been told to watch out for those cross-court passes that are getting picked off, that you can't throw them in a line drive, you have to see the defender. You can blame Mike Woodson all you want, and we're going to talk about him here in a second. He can't go out there and make the passes. So there's a lot of things like that that IU just has to do better on the court. There's been a lot of talk about Mike Woodson in the 24 to 48 hours since this loss. How much is he to blame? And, I mean, I don't – I think there's a fair case that a lot of this is out of his control, and he's doing the best he can. We'll talk about that here in just a moment. So I, I'll start off by saying Mike Woodson's stubbornness in some regards has hurt this Indiana team. 
he really likes playing two bigs on the floor, whether it's Race and Trace, Malik and one of those guys. Even Jordan Geronimo plays more as a big man in the dunker spot or in the post, things like that. His insistence on playing that way has hurt Indiana, not just in these last two games. We talked a lot about it after that Kennesaw State and Elon games where you didn't have Trace. They kind of spread the the floor more. And especially late in that Kennesaw State game, they looked a lot better. The problem is they never really adopted much from that. There was kind of a brief stretch in that beginning of that Iowa game where it looked like, like they were playing with more space and stretching guys out to the perimeter, which ha- gave more driving lanes for Jalen, allowed guys to cut, and you saw Jalen making great passes to trace and race for dunks and things like that. But that was about 10 minutes of the last 80 that IU have played where it looked like that. So his stubbornness in that regard is, I think, has hurt Indiana. I don't know how much he can even afford to do that at this point with the amount of big men IU has left as well as the fact that the guys they have left aren't even playing well. Maybe we see some more Caleb Banks minutes. I I think that might be a stretch in a Big Ten game, especially on the road on Wednesday against Penn State, but I it, it just feels like he has to change up something there. Now, having said all that, there is way too much blame being placed on him. And I thought there was a very interesting quote Trace Jackson Davis had after the game on Sunday. Quote, sometimes we get discombobulated. We're not doing our coverages. Coach had a great game plan. I don't think we followed it at all. We didn't switch when we needed to switch. It's mental errors. When you don't listen to your coaches, that's going to hurt you. I can't tell you how many times I saw people complaining about Mike Woodson not having a game plan and Mike Woodson not making in-game adjustments. And I just wonder if we're watching the same games at times. And when it comes to in-game adjustments, Mike Woodson did a, a, has done a lot in the last couple of games. Specifically that Northwestern game, he went to a zone defense and IU does not play a zone defense. Under Mike Woodson, a disciple of Bob Knight, you play man-to-man and you figure it out. And you are responsible for your guy. And if you stop your guy, you're fine. You don't play zone defense as a Bob Knight disciple. And he had to go to it. I think it helped in some regards. It made rebounding a little bit more difficult, but it stopped the straight line drives to the rim, which was the problem. He also had some full court pressure, which we haven't seen from IU as much this season as well. He was trying things defensively to fix the issue. There were just too many holes to fix. They, he didn't have enough fingers and hands to to plug up all the holes that IU was leaking from on Sunday. And again, when it comes to game planning, I mean, Trace Jackson Davis said himself that they're not following the game plan. We can sit here on Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you're listening to us at, and talk about what we think is going on and how we think I use failing. But ultimately, Trace Jackson Davis sat down and said, we're not following the game plan. We're not switching when we're supposed to. We, we're having mental errors and we're not listening to the coach. I don't know how you can hear or read that quote and then say it's the coach's fault. There are aspects of it that are the problem, but I don't know, like the player, Trace Jackson Davis has not lied. He's not someone that has lied to the media before. He's been honest and he's sitting there and saying, We are making the mistakes. The players are making the mistakes. We have to be better. That's kind of where I stand on things is that I think there are aspects that Mike Woodson has been too stubborn about. I think the players are to blame more than anyone else right now. It's injuries, then it's players, and then it's Mike Woodson. And Mike Woodson's pretty far away from those first two. 
The problem right now is I use roster is kind of stuck between two things because I think it's pretty clear Mike Woodson values athletic, versatile players that can play multiple positions. We talked a lot about this when we were discussing the players IU is recruiting. You can see in the players IU is recruiting, he wants guys that can grab the rebound and go and play multiple positions and have that versatility to play inside and outside and across the perimeter and things like that. He came into a roster that wasn't built for that. It had a lot of stopgap fixes. Miller Cop has had a good season. Versatile is not how I would describe Miller Cop. I'm not going to sit here and single everybody out, but I will say Archie's philosophy is not what Mike Woodson's philosophy is. And the result is he had a really good first season trying to mesh the two. He went into this season looking to uh, implement his philosophy more and it hasn't gone according to plan. Even then, you can't blame him entirely because he doesn't he hasn't had his starting five out there for the meaningful games. We if you look at the the Xavier game, the UNC game, the Kansas game, the Arizona game, and then the Big Ten play, there has been a very little amount of time that IU has had its starting five out there this season. And you know what? When they had, they won. They won, they won games. The only time that starting five did not look good was against Kansas when nobody looked good. Outside of that, that win over Xavier we keep talking about is going to keep IU's non-conference schedule propped up because he had a starting five. The win over UNC, he had his starting five. He hasn't had it the rest of the season, so... It, again, I, I this kind of comes full circle to it's frustrating, it's unfortunate, but a lot of this isn't in anybody's control. It's injuries, and there's nothing you can really do about that. You can try to say next man up, but it's easier said than done at times, especially in the heart of conference play. The thing is, if I use going to sit there and say, well, damn, there's nothing we can do about it. We're just screwed. They're going to lose the rest of the season. This is still a talented team that is underperforming, certainly. And I, I had planned to talk about Jalen Hood, Shafino, and Trace Jackson Davis this episode, but it wasn't longer than I expected. Jalen was named Big Ten Freshman of the Week. Those two have been absolutely brilliant. Everyone not named Jalen and Trace is underachieving right now. There's a lot of talent on this team, and IU can still salvage plenty from this season. But they're running out of time. They play Penn State tomorrow. We're going to have a preview with Locked On Nittany Lions tomorrow. But Penn State, Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan State, and Minnesota are their next five games. It's their most favorable five-game stretch left this season. And they have about five games to figure out whether they're going to salvage something this season, try to tread water until race and trace gets back or race and X get back. Or if this is a lost season and you can blame it somewhat on injuries, but a lot on an underperforming team time will tell, but I use running out of it very quickly in this one. So Thank you guys for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen every single day. We'll be back tomorrow, like I said, to preview the IU Penn State game. We'll have a segment with Locked On Nittany Lions. For your second listen, check out the brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know on and off the court. Plus, you hear from big name experts, coaches, and players throughout the basketball landscape. Locked on College Basketball, available on YouTube, wherever you guys get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter. Like I said, subscribe to us on YouTube as well so you don't miss any of these live shows. Leave a rating and review if you guys can, wherever you listen to us at. Most importantly, though, guys, everybody have a great Tuesday. And as always, LEO.